Hello and welcome to another Monday live stream. My name is Shane Olson and today we're going to be sculpting this amazing, amazing concept by fantastic artist Ben Eblen. I love his stuff. He likes to uh, live stream on Sunday nights from Australia. I believe that's where he's from. He has a really well-rounded knowledge of 3D and planes and all sorts of stuff. So yeah, we're going to check it out. And uh, here we go. Hey, what's up, Mark? I was hoping you'd show up. <laughs> I, so, so Neil is not around today. His wife's turning 40, so he's celebrating her birthday. So if you want to post links, Mark, be you're welcome to if you want to. No pressure. <laughs> but this is Ben Eblen. If you want to find his, I think he's on Instagram. Let's see here. It's interesting. It says six out of six platforms. I wonder what all the platforms are. Okay, Pixelogic Maxon. Oh, okay. It's it's streaming to Maxon channels as well. All right. Well, I'll take it. Oh goodness, I lost my chat. No. No. Gosh, dang it. <coughs> Where did that go? There it is. Okay. Whew. All right, if you chatted in the last couple seconds, I lost it. Uh, yes, starting from a sphere. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> that's the back, that's the side. Yeah, what I like to do is start with a sphere for the cranium. Just kind of squish it like this, then hold down control and drag, and this will be the 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 muzzle. I like to call it the muzzle. The volume's pretty low. Here, let me turn it up. How's that? Is that better? Yeah, let me know. Check test one, two. Hey, Jazzy, how are you? Okay, this is very, very flat. Side of his face. Hey there, Hansrig. How's it going? I don't know if that's how you say your name. So this had... <clears throat> it's very, very flat from the front. I'm kind of swinging it down, try and maintain that look. Just about to go to work, wanted to hop on. Ah, I saw you were sculpting on the Discord earlier today. Is that something new or is it the same? Hello from India. Welcome, welcome. Synopsis, how are, how are you? Welcome. Okay, so I'm just kind of trying to get that whole shape in there. <clears throat> Wasn't on stream lately because of my son. Well, congratulations. That's awesome. That's huge. <clears throat> Come on. Okay, I want this off. Just felt like perspective was turned on for a minute. Which it wasn't, just felt that way for some reason. Let's see. It's midnight here. <laughs> 4 a.m. In, in Australia. Man, this... So Ben Eblen is from Australia. The 
concept artist. He streams on his channel uh, on Sunday nights. And he will do traditional sculpting as well as drawing and painting. And he has a really, really sound knowledge of form. You can see that he really knows his forms well. And I think it helps his drawings a lot. Okay, you can see that these are different uh, mesh densities. This one's pretty low and these are higher. If you look, you can see why. Um, so basically, I'm gonna do an auto group. Let me see, auto group to get each one of these in its own poly group. And then I'm just going to change this polygon size and kind of flood fill this just to keep my mesh density even. Yeah, something like that. Thanks, Mark. Okay, and it, it will hold on to the facets a little bit. So you can just do a sweep with your smooth brush and smooth it out. And then it'll look nice again. You can also hit the side of the head with a polish brush. You thought I was going to say hammer. <laughs> hit, it, hit him with a hammer. What movie is that from? Just start to, start to get those planes in there. Now for the eyes, um, I've been... Recently, I've been uh, playing with getting like the the lower plane of the eye sockets, hitting them with a polish brush, so I can kind of turn the camera to an angle like this. I'm just gonna hit it with a polish brush. That's too much. Let me see. Well, I was just gonna hit transparent, but that doesn't work because they're not on multiple different subtools. They're all in the same subtool. But what I could do is isolate this and then hit it. I'm just trying to knock down this plane like this. Didn't go far enough. I mean, I guess I could put this on a different subtool and then be able to see the other one in there. Something like that. Might be too steep of an angle. Then I can isolate this one. And I'm only guessing because I'm kind of working blind here. See how it starts to create that, that slice, that triangular slice out of there. And then you put the nose over the top. Okay, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to isolate this, uh, split it into a, di a different subtool so then I can hit transparent and then I can see them at the same time. So now I can kind of get a better idea of how far down to push this. Something like that. It's kind of fun. See that? That slant. And I can go grab this one and do the same thing but opposite. I don't do that do it this way very often. A lot of times I like to use the live stream to um to experiment with different techniques. Is it worse as not good not as good to sculpt the whole head from one sphere? It there's no wrong method. It's just however you want to do it. Um I like to sculpt my heads from multiple objects because it gives me a little more control but if you yeah if you want to do it from one sphere then that that's there's nothing wrong with that a lot of people do it okay before we get any further let's go ahead and save it It's kind of like it's kind of like learning how to play the guitar. There are so many different ways to play the guitar. There's not one 
this is how you do it kind of a thing, you know? It's, uh, you can play it however you want it. So you can sculpt however you want. It's the end result that matters. Okay, so I'm gonna put his Pinocchio nose in there. Turn it around. Yeah, a lot of people will start with a sphere and then they'll cut. They'll, they'll use a brush and kind of cut into the surface to cut out the eyes and the the planes like that. Like I believe Folygon likes to work that way. Um, like Danny, Danny Mac, he likes to work that way. <laughs> yeah, that ain't working. That's the way you do it. And I'm just using the polish brush to flatten the edges. And again, this is a little bit too low resolution, so I'm going to just grab this slider and move it slightly, let go. And it'll just flood fill this whole thing. And if you're wondering what this is, this is called uh, Tessimate, this slider. This is on my personal user interface. I've put it there on purpose because I use it all the time. And if you want this user interface, you can get it for free over on my website, 3D Character Workshop. The word's right here, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. I give it away for free over there. Um, and you can get all my brushes for free as well. So, hey, what's up, Leonard? Hey, hey, sane. I hope I'm sane. <laughs> so Neil is not around today. He's celebrating his wife's 40th birthday today. Huge shout out, Charlie, for that. Uh, let's see. Um, where you can find this slider is if you look at the button path down at the bottom, and find it in tool geometry polygon size. If you hold down control over any tool on your inter user interface, it will tell you where the actual original button exists. So you can go find it and stick it on your own user interface if you want to. Okay, I'm gonna go a tad more dense than this. All right. Then I want to grab this Move Infinite brush and maybe AccuCurve. AccuCurve will make it pointy. And then I'm just going to move my camera so I'm going to see the nose from this side and then just kind of push it in. And see how it pinches? Makes that pinch. And do it again up here. Get a little smaller brush and pull it out kind of has this kink in it. <laughs> kink, kink. This one's closer. Okay. Let's grab the polish brush again. So what's going on, Leonard? What's new? What's new with you? too far I'm gonna go too far there's a secret in the in the polish brush H polish here um, if you hold down alt it will actually pull the material up to the brush so if you don't hold down alt it'll just flatten everything around the brush here let me let me show you what I'm talking about let me see if I can give you a good example um, Maybe on his chin, we'll make a big brush. Okay, so regular polish just pushes down a circle like this, okay? And if I hold down Alt, well, let's push it in. If I hold down Alt, it will bring the material up to the brush like this. Sometimes you want that, sometimes you don't. <laughs> what grabbed you in the stylized genre? Um, I'm a sucker for good design. Um, I really, really love, like, like Ben is a phenomenal concept artist because he really knows his forms and he knows his planes, like where the planes of the face make interesting 
changes. So you can see the plane of the side of the face right here and, it, and where it comes around and changes to create the, the shadow and the highlight as it wraps around. Same with on these brows. It's just really, really interesting to me. And on a real, like a realistic person's face, it really isn't that pushed. And I just, I don't know. I really like design. It's fun. And I love the challenge of trying to match somebody's concept. Yeah, Peaky Blinders from, <laughs> yep. How, how you doing, Eric? I haven't seen you for a while. How's it going? Thanks for stopping by the stream. You know what? I didn't mean to pull that into the face. Let's do that. And I'm going to pull this up into the brow a little bit more. And pull this out. Yeah, he's... He's really, really good at shape language, for sure. Okay, I'm going to go even smaller with this. There we go. I want to smooth it out. I don't want to destroy it. Okay. Pull these out even further, these wings nostril wings and then for his nostrils you know I got it's looking a little more shallow than what I have it so I'm going to pull it in I, I'll probably have to pull the mouth out more too Leonard must have went AFK. Okay, and then I'll, I'll smooth this out, this connection to the face after I merge it together later on here. And I kind of want to pull these, the brow up already. I typically don't sculpt with an expression but with this one I'm going to do you make 3d do you make characters for 3d printing only or movie and games as well so I worked in games for 23 years ish and I also did toys for the last five years and you can see a bunch of my 3d prints back here these are ones that I've done Doing well, busy with work. Share with you later on the project. Awesome. Oh, nasty bug. That's no fun. I am getting into uh, character creator though. Uh, real, real illusion. We'll have to talk about that, Eric. It's pretty, pretty interesting stuff. So real, real illusion is a plugin. Well, real illusion has a plugin for ZBrush, um, and it basically helps you pose your characters. And I'm going to be doing, I'm trying to, I'm trying to learn how to use it because sometimes posing in ZBrush can be slow. And uh, with this Real Illusion character creator, it can be very, very quick. And Michael Pavlovich already has a video on it. So does Pablo Munez Gomez. He's got a video on how to get your characters from ZBrush over, over to uh, character creator. And get it posed. It's super cool. Thanks, Mark. Um, that's amazing. How often do you use Zero Mesher for retopo when working for games? Uh, zero times. You don't. I, I highly recommend not using Zero Mesher for retopo. Zero Mesher is great for making uh, sculptable geometry. It is not good for making game game models. Uh, what device and material do you use for printing? Um, most most of the ones back here are printed on a Form 2. 
and a few are printed on a form three and they're using you can see the boxes of materials down here um they're using just just form labs gray for the, most of them and i'm there's a i'm trying to remember what the other one is called it's kind of like a porcelain material it's really nice okay i think his nose is getting too long Turn off that Q curve and just kind of squish this whole thing up. And Mark, I think with this one, I might do the the, the sphere technique that you like so much. <laughs> which software you use the most for retopo? Which one do you, would you suggest? Topo gun or Maya? Um, I've used Maya's Quadra in the past. That's really nice. Um, yeah, I like. This is Maxon's channel, so I don't like to talk about other software too much. So, um, but yeah, I've, I've used, I've used them all, but yeah, quadra is pretty good. Okay. So for the mouth, like I said, I think I'm going to use the sphere, the sphere technique with this guy. And I think what I mean by that is you can insert a sphere like this right here. Hey, what's up, Jace? While working on Disney Infinity, how many models did you take on at once? And what's the timeline like? Um, well, it kind of varied a lot, actually. But typically, I was only working on one model at one time. Okay, so I'll do that. <laughs> the lizard, yeah. What? Don't be talking about our competitors. I've actually been enjoying um, Cozy Blanket on the iPad for Retopo. That's that's a surprising new development. It's quite good. Do industries demand characters from Sketch, or can we take a base model? Um, industries only care about the end result, I think. So for the most part, um, that being said, I would learn how to model your own base meshes. Uh, I wouldn't use them as a crutch. So just learn, learn how to do it yourself and then use base meshes if you're, if you're learning. I want to pull this out that's what's going on okay but yeah i don't i don't think base meshes are a big no no <laughs> victim of progress missing olson 3d sculpting <laughs> yeah their their last name is spelled differently my last name is um is Swedish based and O L S E N is Dutch. So there's some worthless information for you. Next time you're at a party, you can drop that. Smooth this out a little bit. And let's get this chin squared off. Useful 3D sculpting and aim trivia. <laughs> right. So let's see here. Bring this back. Flatten this out. I really like H polish. It's it's good. Especially when you're trying to make different planes. Sometimes you can push it too far though, and it can become concave. Like that. 
You play games as well? I do. I love games. That's what I do in my spare time. I have Scandinavian heritage. I believe I do. So I am a dad. Dad's dad. Dad's dad. So fourth generation Swedish immigrant. I guess I guess the last name used to be Olosen before it was Olsen. Olosen. Something like that. I don't know. Okay, I'm going. That's too much. Mm, too much. Okay, try that. Topo is not only done because of poly count, but because of flow. And remember, don't give a good flow for the UVs and animation. Yeah, you. There, there are several reasons to do retopology. Mainly it's for, so your models can deform well in animation. That's the main reason. And the second reason is to, uh, to guide your UVs and to make, make predictable cut lines. That Realusion tool. Hey, what's up, George? How you doing, man? Realusion tool looks pretty cool. Does it handle well with tent dense tools? Okay, so George, here's the th here's the thing. Since I have you here and you know it, you know what I'm talking about. Here's the here's the procedure. Okay. So if you have a really dense model, what you want to do is 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 create it like you're going to pose it in ZBrush. So. No Dynamesh meshes, no Sculptress Pro meshes, uh, Tessimated meshes. You'd basically take your high density mesh, Z remesh it, subdivide it, project the detail onto that. So you have um, low resolutions that have been subdivided, all your subtools like that, right? Because that's kind of how you would pose in ZBrush. And then you you can you have two choices at that point. You can either UV everything like temporary ZBrush UVs, you know, from UV Master, and then uh, create textures for all of those pieces, um, and then push that over, and or it will also do uh, poly paint if you want, but it's gonna be on the lowest, it's gonna send over the lowest resolution uh, objects, of you know, the lowest resolution subdivision from your subtools. So sometimes the poly paint doesn't always look that great. Um, so if you have, high density, like really big, you know, highly detailed textures on your surfaces, then you would want, to, if you want to see those textures over in Character Creator, because it does have a kind of a, um, a real time renderer like EV or uh, uh, Marmoset, something like that. Um, and so you can send it over there, see your textures, and it actually, it actually works quite well um, doing it that way and then you can go and you you can rig it up really quickly it has some rig guides and you can put a rig in there really fast it'll create the bones and then you can do skin weighting and then you can um you can bring those poses back to zbrush as layers and zbrush has there's a plugin that is called what is it called Do I, oh i don't have it loaded in my 2023 um, it's just called Character Creator, and it basically, that plugin becomes a pose manager, and then it, it will create a layer on every single subtool. So you better be done with doing what you're doing with all your subtools, because it's going to put layers on every single one. And then you can swap between those layers with that layer manager. It's pretty nice. So then you can just kind of go through the poses that way. So it's pretty cool and helpful. Uh, let's see. What's the best way to go about handling a hard edge from the jaw from more than the angle of reference? Do you run out under the chin to the neck? Um, yeah, Eric, I'll, I'll, I'll combine it eventually and then I'll work out that seam. If you're talking about the, if you're talking about this hard seam right here, after I combine them, then that will go away. But until then, um, I just kind of, I just kind of work through it. 
Let me see here. But yeah, that's, that's what I was doing before the long X. <laughs> yeah, George. That's the only thing that I'm just like, uh, are you sure about that? <laughs> oh man. But that's how, that's how they do it. That's how they choose, chose, chose to do it. I mean, if you, if you save out your own, like a new Z tool, you know, and use it that way. So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, doesn't mess with your workflow of everything else. I think it would be fine. Uh, let's see here. Hope you're doing well. Love this concept. Of Arthur. Yeah, it's, it's really, I love it. How proliferate are stylized character jobs at animation game studios? Or are there more realistic character jobs? Um, I honestly, I don't know for sure. Um, they're out there. There's plenty of them out there. That's for sure. But I don't know what the ratio is. And honestly, I wouldn't, if you're, if you're right in the middle of like, well, should I go stylized? Should I go realistic? I would, my advice to you on that is go with your passion, not with what, with where there's more jobs. I know, I know that's a factor. Don't get me wrong. But, um, if, if like, if you want to do stylized characters and you're stuck doing realistic characters, you're not going to like your job. So there's no reason to do that, you know? So follow your heart. <laughs> it's really cool. I usually do Z remesh project. Yeah. Yeah. And it is not, you don't have to uh, put it, push it to layers. I mean, you can just bring it back and just like steamroll what you already have. And now that's your new thing. Right. So um, it just makes it so basically like on, when I was working on Disney Infinity, we had to like ship off several poses to get them greenlit from uh, different license holders like Lucas and Marvel and Disney and, you know, all those places. And it was, you know, how posing characters inside of ZBrush isn't always the fastest thing to do. So what we would do is we would send the model like a really crappy Z remeshed model over to the rigging department to have it rigged very quickly. And then we'd have the animators pose them up and send those poses off to get greenlit. And that was, that was a long process. So if we had like character creator instead, that would just shorten that process a lot, right? It would just be like, we would just take this character and send it over there and pose it up. And, you know, we can do as many poses as we want to in a very short amount of time. And you know I'm I'm surprised by how good the the default skin weighting is over there. It's it's pretty it's pretty good, pretty solid. Okay, I need to focus on what I'm doing here for a second. So I don't want to have this ledge right there. Let's soften that out. learn all the styles and get a debuff to sanity. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, again, I keep comparing learning sculpting to learning a guitar. Okay. You're like, well, should I learn country or should I learn heavy metal? You know, that's kind of what you're asking me. And so they're, they're, you're still learning how to play the guitar at the end of the day. Right. So it doesn't really matter. You just need to learn how to play play the guitar, and you will be able to sculpt both realistic and stylized eventually at the end of the day. So, there she goes. <laughs> Hope you're okay. Nice to hear you and see you again. I'm really confused by your fill brush. Um, that's not something I hear every day. <laughs> so the fill brush. It works best on a higher density uh, mo model. Okay, so usually I use it when, like, like say I use this detail brush and I make a peak like this, and then it it if you look at look at it from the side, see it kind of has that dip right there. Then I come in with this fill brush, and I fill in this gap like this. 
And it also has another component, which is scrape. It kind of does the opposite. So on this side, I can hold down Alt and push in and scrape it down and it pushes in. And so then I get kind of get that stair steppy effect. But that's how the, the fill brush works. But it doesn't, the result looks like the, you have to have it high enough density. If it's not, if it's not high enough resolution, it's not gonna work. You gotta have a high density. Project, Project Brian, this is the Maxon channel. And I, I only, I'm talking about Maxon products like ZBrush, Cinema 4D. So uh, yeah, I'm not, I can't really talk about that stuff. Um, Mohammed, did you use any add-ons, plugins, and or API libraries for this workshop? No, I'm just using the default. No guitar player, you ask, should I learn tabs or notes? There you go. That's a better, actually, that's a better comparison, but yeah, but it, it is more like a genre thing, you know, realistic versus stylized. Stylized, I wouldn't compare to like tablature if that's what you're, <laughs> if that's what you've kind of saying okay i'm really glad i was able to catch a stream i've been following for a while now it's very helpful going into my modeling class last month nice sir why you let I assume you're meaning left Walt Daisy. Are you saying Walt Disney? Why did I leave Walt Disney? Because the studio I was working at um, got purchased by Warner Brothers. Walt Disney sold it to Warner Brothers. And then I made a course. It's called the 3D Character Workshop. Um, while I was working at Disney, I made a course. That's what this logo is from right here. And um, the course did really, really well. I sold a lot, and now that's what I do full time. So, if you're interested in that course, you can go check it out at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Thanks for being a teacher, all of us. I know we give you a lot of pressure with questions. No, I love the questions, honestly. I mean, it does slow down my sculpting, <laughs> but I, I like, I like answering the questions. I was just talking to my buddy Steve James about it today because a lot of the questions are repeats every every single week it's like what what's you know what's this what's that so okay did, speaking of questions did I miss any if I missed your question the the chat's going pretty quick today so if I missed your question please ask it again I don't mind Uh, what kind of hardware tablet do you use? I'm using kind of a, it's kind of a potato PC at this point. It was pretty fast when I bought it, but now it's, it's start, it's start getting, it's starting to get a little slow. It's a AMD 16 or 1700, 1700. Is that a thing? Um, but it has two 1080, uh, GT, GT, what are they called? GeForce cards, two 1080s in it. Um, 32 megs of RAM, I think, maybe 64. And uh, the tablet I'm using is a 27 inch Wacom Cintiq. Okay. Oh, thanks, Eric. Eric says the course is worth it if you want to level up and get better with structure, but as always, it isn't a silver bullet. And you got to, you get out of it what you put into it. Yep. Yeah. You got to put in the work just like again practicing guitar you have to practice how to play guitar to get better at playing guitar you have to practice sculpting to get better at it watch a little ton of the live q a's from 3d character workshop they're some of the best parts to learn from because they make all the same mistakes that everybody else makes absolutely and there are hours and hours and hours of q a 
um, inside the workshop. I think now there's more Q and A hours than actual course hours, probably by a long shot. Um, what are those brushes after chisel? These are all my my brushes. Um, I'm not gonna. I I don't have time to go through each of these brushes, but I give them away for free over on my website, uh, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. You can go get them for free and try them out yourself, and see what each one of these does. So, yeah. These are just all my brushes, and these are my paint brushes over here. Okay. Have I ever made a stylized self-portrait? Absolutely, I've done it twice. Let me, I'll look and see if I can find a fast one that I've done. I did one during the live stream once, I think. Do you mostly use pinch brushes to make plane changes? No, I mostly use H polish to make the planes, which then create the the peaks, the changes. But sometimes I'll use the pinch brush to, to finish it off, I guess. Hmm. Oh, here's one. Okay, open. Here you go. <laughs> That's an oldie, but a goodie. I'm seeing if I had an older one. Nope, I don't know where my older one is. But that, one's, that one was fun. Do <laughs> you find using the Cintiq works better than a regular tablet? Um, that's a question I get all the time. And I'll just tell you right now, just get a tablet with pressure sensitivity. The only thing a Cintiq is going to do for you is make make you a faster sculptor because you have a one to one. So it's uh, you'll you'll most likely make the stroke you want the first time. Versus the there's a a, a degree of separation when you're using a tablet, and sometimes you'll have to make the stroke three or four times to get it right. Um, but it's complete personal preference. Absolutely. You do, you do not need a Cintiq at all. It's just, and it's not going to make you a better artist. Just like a better guitar is not going to make you a better guitarist. I've been talking about guitars a lot today. What's going on? Yeah, like a good a good guitarist can play an amazing song on a piece of crap guitar. Doesn't, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so I'm actually going to take this mouth thing now and I'm going to split it off to its own subtool. When will you merge all poly groups? Um, when I'm ready, typically. I have to I get everything in place and then I merge them. There's and there's not a there's not a okay, now it's time to merge. It's whenever you you need to, right? As an as you're as you're um, going through yourself making your own models, you'll know when it's time. When basically when you run out of stuff to do while everything's separated. That's that's basically when it when when it, you should do it. Okay, so I have this uh, this mouth sphere right here. I'm going to duplicate it. Duplicate, so now I have two of them. One's going to be the upper lip and one's going to be the lower lip. So basically I'm going to use this knife brush now. And then I'm going to go around it. Man, I wish it would clip like that. <laughs> I'm too used to something else working that way. Um... Are you preferring to block out the volume of the mouth a lot more recently? It's just a technique sometimes I like to do because it, it gives me a couple things, right? It gives me the, the teeth curvature inside the mouth automatically. So I like that a lot. Um, and then if I pull it up to up behind the nose flange, it automatically starts to give me that smile line coming out from behind the nose. 
and then it gives me the proper volume. So the distance between the tip of the nose and the back of the nostril flange is where the lip should be right here. So it automatically gives me that too. I'm scoping this too. We requested some advice on the Discord server. I I asked you if I I don't I don't know if you responded fast enough. So I wanted I wanted to work out some of the problems because it, it this is very uh, prob like it's a puzzle, right? You're trying to work out the pieces of of the puzzle, and there are some really interesting plane changes happening through here. And I was looking at it, and I'm like, okay, I don't know quite what to tell you on how to how to do that right through there unless I try it myself. So that's why I decided I'm like, oh, I should try that. So, but it's looking good. Yeah, your version's looking good. I think, like I, I think I uh, answered, I said the, the biggest thing or the, is the eye size and then make sure the iris is getting covered just a little bit because he's got that deer in the headlights look just a bit. Okay, so I'm gonna use a BK and then this knife curve rather than the knife lasso. And then I'm going to slice it like so. And let me see, maybe, maybe like that. <laughs> that looks like his mustache already. And that's his top lip. I'm going to put it up above. And then we got this lower lip and we're going to cut it like, like this. Okay. Mr. Response on Discord. Oh, no worries, no worries. I hope you don't mind that I'm sculpting it too. Okay. And I, I'm I'm sculpting it <laughs> in direct response of of you posting it because I want to try. I was I was like, mm, I got I want to try that and see what's going on. Okay. Now that this is here, I just start to shape it. You know, I think I want to make that. Mm, I don't think I can. I want to put that lip on a different, like a more steep angle, but then it won't cut all the way back. Here, let me just try it. I don't think it'll work as good. Yeah, see, it it cuts it cuts it too short. Oh, George, tell me about it. Yeah, it's crazy how stylized characters can look so simple, but how complex they can be, especially if translating to 3D. You know, that wasn't more true than when um, one of my students was like a complete, complete beginner. And I'm like, well, maybe, maybe you, uh, maybe you should try Kirby, right? It's like, it's a sphere with some arms. And I, I tried it myself and I could not believe how difficult the the shapes were for just simple Kirby, you know, because you have to measure, you have to measure how, like the distance between, um, like where his arms come out of his body and how far apart his eyes are. And there's so much to it. Please do fast. Well, I'm answering questions, so I can only go as fast as I can go. If I wasn't talking and I was just sculpting, that'd be a different story. But if you want, you I have a whole bunch of videos, I think over 200 of them, on the Pixelogic YouTube channel. And you can set the speed to times two on those things and watch it as fast as you want. I tried the Kirby thing and agree. <laughs> I don't mind. I get all sorts of comments on here. Whatever. I watch most videos on times two myself, so I understand. <laughs> Thanks, Nandi. Okay, so I'm I'm masking this out because that's a mouth interior, and then I'm gonna pull this up to try and get that that lip angle angling down without pulling up the entire mouth interior. 
and you'll see that when I'm using my move brush, I'm just using little teeny tiny movements, but it still creates what I call warbles, lumps and bumps. <laughs> George. Thanks. <laughs> you can smell me through the screen, huh? <laughs> Do I sculpt likeness? Uh, I try. Okay, so when I do this, it uh, it stretches out the polys. So what I'll typically do is go back to this uh, tessimate slider and just tessimate it a little bit, give myself some more geometry that I can use. That's what I love about the the tessimation geometry is anytime I want, I can just like adjust that and it'll flood fill my surface with usable geometry. You've done an incredible caricature of people with a lot of likeness. Thanks. Thanks, Wilbur. I appreciate it. Even volts or an electrode can be kind of a pain. <laughs> if the eyes are not good and place too high or low, it feels oh yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. You know, yeah, they're they're just like deceptively difficult. They, they look easier than they are. And it's funny because a lot of people think that, uh, that stylized characters are easier than realistic characters, and I beg to differ. I think stylized are way harder. It's like, it's like the Hulk says, with stylized characters, you're exposed like a nerve. Like, you have to keep your surfaces very, very clean and well-designed. And so everybody can see everything. With realistic characters, you can kind of cover everything with textures and pores. And you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not bashing realistic sculptors at all. I'm just saying it's, it's not as, it's not as easy as it looks. Hey, Jerome, how are you? You would know, sir. <laughs> How's it going? I just saw your post with those giant fish. Holy cow. Yeah, simple and appealing does not mean easy. <laughs> you want to do Kirby now? You should do Kirby. It's a good it's a good exercise for sure. And a surprising one. It's it's really difficult to get him uh Keep him on model. They, that, that, that's what they call it in the industry is on model. Which basically means looking like the character. <laughs> You're good. Well, thanks for stopping by. It's always good to see you. Let's see. Two big eyeballs ain't <laughs> easy to fit in the head. Well, with Kirby, I, I will typically not do that with two big eyeballs. I'll do it like with either paint or just the shape I'll cut out because they're very long, skinny. I don't know. They're just hand painted, hand drawn. Okay, so for this, I think the no, I think the not the upper lip is hidden by his mustache. So I don't really know what's going on under there. I can just guess. Any advice for getting into the toy collectibles industry? Um, my advice would be to, uh, I know this is gonna sound trite, but put 3D printed characters in pose in your portfolio. <clears throat> That's the biggest thing. Um, and the second thing is buy, well, it depends on if you wanna get into toy making where there's articulation. And if you are, you can, go buy toys and like break them apart to see how the articulation is done. Typically toys are engineered by a third third party engineer in a different software. So you don't necessarily need to know how to do all that stuff. Um, there's actually a really good presentation at uh, the ZBrush Summit a couple years ago by um, Paul from Hasbro who went into how to uh, do do articulation on toys. It's really, really good. And you may or may not see a cameo of me asking him to demonstrate it. <laughs> I was I was at that ZBrush Summit.
Um, but yeah, I would, I would definitely put like collectibles in your portfolio. Basically you want to, your portfolio is a vessel to show people that you can do what they need you to do. That's all it, that's all it's there for. So as long as you can show people that you can do what you need, they need you to do, then you should be, uh, yeah, should be good to go. And that doesn't necessarily mean making fan art of their toys. So for example, if you wanted to work at say Funko, I wouldn't necessarily go and make Funko, you know, fan art. I would just make really good toys that are, it's kind of in the same vein as that. Um, let's see. Can you share a link for your YouTube playlist on the Pixelogic ZBrush channel? I don't have it on right here and it would take me a minute to go get it. I don't, hey Mark, I don't know if you have time or someone, if you have a second to post that. Any, anyone, anyone? <laughs> Let's see, uh, when you're blocking out the base shapes, it depends on the method. I mean, two spheres for the head or just one. You use a separated sphere for the mouth, like as now or not. It, it, like I said it earlier in this stream, it completely depends on the technique and the method that you choose to do. There are so many different ways to sculpt a head. Um, a lot of times you can just sculpt with a sphere or, you know, and just start cutting out the the hollow spaces for the eyes and stuff like that a lot of people will start that way me personally i really like um blocking out in primitive shapes because it i can just see it better and it gives me more control and i can keep my surfaces cleaner and you can absolutely make realistic characters this way it it doesn't take much to go beyond this into a more realistic head so it's you can use any method for any any direction you want to go essentially um, I'd also say to try and cut up some sculpts like action figures. Oh yeah, absolutely. Hey George, where are you working right now? You're in you're in toys now, aren't you? That is a playlist link for the person. Oh, there's a playlist link. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So you have to go over on Twitch to get the playlist if you're not there already, um, because YouTube does not allow for links. You had to see my. Teacher teaching ZBrush for the first time saying we should create ourselves with likeness. <laughs> Me? How do I make a ball? <laughs> oh, are you serious here at McFarland's? Okay, got it. That's awesome. Well, congrats. So are you in Arizona? Or are you working? Sorry, I should take this offline and ask you. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm just gonna put these eyes in there. Uh, reset my gizmo and then snap them. There you go. Trying to specialize in character creation. I'm learning 3D from past year. Can you give me some advice or tips for a better career in character creation? It depends on what you want to do. If you want to go into film or games or television or where you want to. And that's, that's where, wherever you, whatever you want to do, that's where you should focus, in my opinion. Let's see, his eyes are pretty close together. It's really interesting. He's got these kind of like, kind of these turned sad eyes. So I'll have to get that in the... In there in a second um but yeah i so first the first question you have to ask, ask yourself do you want to work which in which part of the industry do you want to work in and then um the second is you know do you want to work in realistic or stylized um and then just kind of focus down on that kind of stuff <laughs> make bottles <laughs> i'm still waiting for that money <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay, I'm going to split this off. Thanks for the caricature book recommendation. It's pretty cool and a handy book. Yep, I still got it right here. This one. 
It's uh, Mad Art of Caricature by Tom Richmond. This is the best caricature book ever. Highly recommended. It's funny, I still have it sitting here. Learning eyes were funny because I never realized how little of the actual eyeball you see. Most of it's just squashed into the head for sure, especially with stylized characters. Hey, Babu, how are you? Yes, highly recommended. Yeah, so this is what my friend Steve and I were talking about. And Jerome, maybe you can, I don't know, you can, there's there's some cheating going on right here in this in this drawing where the left side of his face is like super smooth, right? We got this line right here. And I know it's kind of, I don't know, yeah, it's it's tricky. So it's showing this. It's like a, a drawn line from the top to the bottom straight. But on this side, we have some plane changes, right? We have ignoring the hair. We have this plane coming down to about here. Let me uh, let me zoom in on this so you can see it better. Okay. So it's coming down here, and then we have this very subtle plane change. There's a little line right there for that uh, that jawbone that goes back and points towards the ear out to here and then it cuts in on that plane right there right so straight down comes out a little bit and goes back down so if you're looking at that same thing over on this side it wouldn't be straight like this it would be more like this I've I've taken it too far I gotta cut it back but yeah I'll, I'm gonna have to work that out I still gotta work out I, I've kinda damaged his nose too much I gotta work that out too man it's got the symmetry on it got messed up Okay, that's that's kind of what happens when you work with uh, very complex simplicity. Yep, that's the, that's the best way to put it. Oh my goodness. And if you guys don't know who Jerome is, you should. He is he's been at Pixar since the very very beginning, and he's a. Uh, He's an amazing, amazing um, traditional sculptor. And I, I've been thinking about, I got to get that interview done with you ASAP, Jerome. So we have to, we should talk about that. Okay, let me fix this nose. Um, let's see. What's the difference between the H polish brush and the trim dynamic brush? Um, they're very, very similar. The, the trim dynamic goes a little faster. It's a little, if you want to work the surface faster, that's, that's a better way to do it. Let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Some toy companies change the perspective settings in ZBrush for 3D printing. Is it really necessary? perspective settings um well so by default the perspective is very fisheye in here and that's why in my custom user interface i actually have where did it go these right here and i can change this down to uh, an 85 so 35 is the default there's a 50 and 85 right here and i like i like to check my perspective with 85 because it's not as pushed like that um but yeah, I, they, they probably push their perspective more towards what it looks like in, if you're holding it in your hand or something like that. Um, so let's see. Uh, no, 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 no. How are you doing? Kind of been living under rock lately. I was wondering if you know anybody from the concept art department. I wanted to know what the impact of AI is on the industry on a larger scale. Is it better for us to be specialists or is it better to branch out and take more generalistic approach? Um, I, I'm tr I don't know. Um, I don't really know what my take on that is because first of all, it's very uh, like immoral in my opinion, like ripping off other artists, like scraping their, their art and making it's like high tech collage, right? Um, so, so I have an opinion about that, that I don't think it's, it's right. 
Um, and then legislature, I don't know what they're doing with, with it because it's not copyrightable because nobody created it other than a computer. So um, I don't know about that. And the, the third thing and the biggest thing is you can't art direct it. There's nothing right now that you can do with it with art direction. So it kind of ends with the image that it creates. You can't really take what it creates and say, well, change this and change that. It doesn't work. It'll create a whole new thing for you. So I'm not, I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, I wouldn't be as a, as a character artist. Um, I think it will inform a lot of stuff going forward, but um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't, I don't really have much more of an opinion beyond that. But it'll be interesting to see where it, where it's headed in the future. And you know, a lot of it you can actually use to study, like sculpture, um, because a lot of it it will it's it's scraping three D renders from from artwork. So and it it can do a really good job at like defining where cloth wrinkles go. Um, mus some muscles, not all. I mean, sometimes it's bu it's busted and it doesn't work. Um, but you can use it as as like a reference to see how how wrinkles would flow in certain poses and things like that. And it, just use it as reference, like you would use use anything as reference, you know. Um, so you recommended actually printing and taking photographs of the figures for non-articulated toy. Yeah, like the ones I have behind me. So these right here. Yeah, these are all 3D prints of my stuff. And I would, I could totally take those and put them in my portfolio, nicely lit, nicely rendered, you know, lit in, in real life. And then I would be comfortable sending those off to a toy company. Which I kind of have in the future. The brush you used on the nose. This is just the print, the pinch brush, and it's free. I give it away for free. It's uh, <laughs> AI anatomy is really funny. Yeah, sometimes it gets it right, and sometimes it's just it's there's <laughs> so wrong, so wrong. You so you have to you can use it as reference, but you got to know your stuff. But yeah, I give away these brushes for free. You can get these over on my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. You can check it out over there. Um, is there any artistic approach to fel to fellow? I think you mean follow while the 3D character life cycle development process. I'm not exactly sure what the question is with that. Follow the I'm not, I'm not quite understanding. Maybe, uh, maybe ask it in a slightly different way. Sorry about that. Okay. And I typically do not work with perspective turned on because the slice and knife brushes and things like that don't work with perspective. AI is very linear. So the more depth, the more team you need. Yeah. And it doesn't do retopology. It doesn't do UVs. It do, so for three D modeling, it's there's not enough models in the world to scrape to get it to work. So with yeah, with three D modeling with AI, I'm not unless it starts to generate point clouds and it can do scan data and stuff like that. I which which could possibly come in the future. I don't know, but for now, not too concerned about it. Okay, I gotta turn on local symmetry and turn off dynamic. There we go. Is there any illustration methods to follow? Illustration methods? Oh, Douglas. Um, so well. I was gonna say, if you're over on Twitch, then um, me is posting the link in in there, but you can't post links to YouTube. So see underneath me right here, 3D Character Workshop, just add a .com onto the end of that, and that's where my brushes are. 
Um, Project Brian, I don't, I wouldn't say that. I have my own secret collection over on Pinterest, and some of those characters absolutely blow my mind. Um, and they're, some are, are quite insane, like well done. So I don't know if I'd say, I'd go as far as to say that. But again, they're just scraping renders. So they're renders of 3D characters, not 3D characters themselves. So it's, um, yeah, it's, again, it's good to use as reference. I mean, you want to you want to gather reference from everywhere, mainly from real life. But okay, let's see. Change this polygon size. Uh, when using a single perspective reference drawing, I find getting the orthographic views look good. Do you have some advice on getting the other views to work well with the references? It mainly comes from experience and knowing the anatomy, knowing the skull shape, that kind of stuff comes from practice. But um, basically, I'm, I'm using the information that I have and guessing the rest. Well, ed education, educational guesses, experience guesses. So basically when you're practicing, you are developing your eye to fill in those gaps. Uh, let's see, is there any modeling sculpting technique? Yeah, sorry, Mohammed, I'm just not understanding your question. Is there any modeling sculpting technique to follow? I mean, if you're asking about the process, the overall process, then absolutely there is a, there is a workflow and a process to follow. Um, I cover the entire process in my workshop, but I can't really explain the entire process here, like from start to finish, you know? Um, but I, I mean, every, every week I go through like pretty much how to make a bust. Sometimes I'll do a cartoony, simple animal character or something like that. And the process changes. It's not always exactly the same. But basically I block out my characters with primitive objects and then uh, sculpt it. <laughs> Muhammad, you're talking to me like I'm an AI, like I'm chat GTP or something funny uh like rephrasing <laughs> to get a different result seeing the way you see the concept of models has blown my mind for stylized models i'm going to start studying more about it thank you douglas i appreciate it what are the steps for an artwork project life cycle process yeah i can't it's it's too much to break down and explain during a live stream. Yep, see the thing, do the thing, hate the thing, accept the thing, love the thing. That's kind of the process. <laughs> That's a good one. Life cycle. Okay. Most of the time spent is refine, like see the thing, refine the thing, try to figure it out. Okay, let's see. Okay, I need to start working on these eyes. I think his nose is too big. What I usually do is I kind of try and get everything in place as much as possible. 
and then look at it with a, a critical eye and try to measure things and see where I'm off. I want to get his forehead a little steeper, a little flatter in the front. Um, what character model are you most proud of from your Disney Infinity era that you worked on? Um, Jose, I, I don't know. I want to say, I want to say Boba Fett. He was a lot of fun, and he kind of opened my eyes to um, what a pose could do in hard surfacing. It was really fun to push him. Um, yeah, there's, but there's a lot. There's a lot. I, I really like how Tinkerbell came out and Alice. And honestly, the one I like the most is the one that never got released from uh, Jin Erso from Rogue One because her likeness worked out. Um, any advice on pricing yourself? That's a big, that's a big question. Because it depends on what the, what it is, like what the, uh, what the project is going to be used for. It depends on like where the project is being developed, like say India versus the U S for example. Um, yeah, there's a lot that goes into pricing and like how many of the things there are characters that you need to do. Yeah, there's, there's a lot. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. I'm just gonna, I'm just trying to fill these eyes. Um, thanks for the answer. Totally think it was immortal to use other artists' work without commission. First, I thought about it the same way. Now there's a control net and different models, for example. They can train the models to get different characters, different styles, different actions. Now what scares me is that if the people are able to get the AI stuff to produce consistent results, I think it's possible to use them for a program. I, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't have an answer for that. I wish I did. Any tips on how to do stylized eyes and eyelids so it doesn't look like it's been stung by a bee? I'm going to get to that. I'm going to, well, hopefully, hopefully I'm going to get to his eyeballs and you'll see how I do it. How do you proceed to define the art workflow? Do you have a tutorial video to recommend? Yeah. So, Mohammed, I, I teach the entire workflow over at 3dcharacterworkshop.com, the whole thing. It's a paid it's a paid workshop, but I do teach the whole thing over there, the whole workflow from start to finish. Um, let's see. I think you've answered this a couple of times, but other than the caricature book, do you have any other recommend? Um, I recommend Anatomy for Sculptors. It's really, really great. Um, and speaking of Anatomy, uh, Proco, like Proco.com is very, very good. It's It's a website for figure drawing, but it's really good for learning anatomy. Uh, Stan Prokopenko is amazing at teaching anatomy. So if you want to check that out, I also recommend um, Tuesday Tips by, uh, maybe you guys can help me out. Remember Griselda, Grizz and Norm. There you go, Grizz and Norm. And sometimes that book is hard to find, but man, it's a treasure trove of stuff. And you can find a lot of the images out of that book over on Pinterest. Um, so, you, yeah, you, you can find it there. But I, I highly, highly, highly recommend the book. It's great. Okay, you know what? On these eyes, I'm going to make them smaller. They're too big. I typically will make my eyes larger than I think they need to be to begin with. And then I'll, then I'll shrink them down. There we go. That's better. 
So typically, uh, stylized characters, the, the relationship or the ratio is one eye width between the eyes. That's how, that's how you can tell how far apart they should be. And then one eye width from the side of the head to the eye. That's how you can kind of t gauge the width. But in stylized characters, that typically is smaller. Okay. Hey, what's up, Lord Humongous? How you doing? Can you show the gin model? I can, Jose, one second. Hey, Lane, any tips on getting the character? I did already answer that during the stream. Um, basically, the answer I gave was make sure you fill your portfolio with 3D printed toys that look, they look like toys that exist. Um, because basically your portfolio you got to show people that you know how to make the toys that you want to people want you to make okay I'm just getting this uh, eye cavity a little bit deeper because then I'm going to make the eyelids come out from there that's actually a big um, a big thing I run into with a lot of my students is they don't make the eye cavity deep enough Okay, one second and I'll show you guys what Jin Urso looks like. Okay, let me save this. I made a sculpt for a concept artist friend and he printed it. I've been debating if he should. Apparently a big hit. When he goes to cons, oh nice, that's awesome. That's very cool. Can you talk a little bit about when it's acceptable to deviate from the concept art because sometimes it can be limited? Um, yeah, it depends on, depends on the concept art, honestly. But like this one, like I'm probably gonna deviate from this side being so straight because this side is explaining it in a little bit different way that I like a little better. So it's not going to be, I'm going to try my hardest to make it nice and clean like that. It, as seen from about this angle. So I'm going to be pulling, I'll be pulling this out a little bit more and, and smoothing that out, but we'll have to see. And I need to adjust all this lower jaw area. It's not really working out for me. He's looking like a boxer. His nose is too big. Okay. Um, let's, let me see if I can find this. Da, 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 da. Trying to remember the name of it. Hero. Let's see if this is it. Oh, this is not the posed version. So here she is not posed. <laughs> Uh, I use Cinema 4D for my 3D models, but when you download a, you sh should get it free, but I don't see it. Is Cinema 4D only available through Maxon? Yeah, you could, you should, I don't work for Maxon. I'm a volunteer here, so I, I can't answer your question completely, but I do know that, uh, Cinema 4D is owned by Maxon. Let's see if I can find her pose. Wifey, okay. Come on in. There we go. Let's 
So that's her in her pose. That's her, her outfit from Rogue One. It's really fun to get these, the cloth and stuff happening like this. But here, one second, let me grab the toy itself. It's actually a different, the, the, fin, the final is actually a different toy, or a different pose. Hello. Okay, let's see. It's, the face isn't painted. Focus. Oh, camera. Focus on my fingernails. It wants to focus on my shirt. You can do it. Almost there. Oh, what my watch? There it goes. Okay. Here. <laughs> there you go. All right. Okay, let's see. Rogue 2. <laughs> McFalls. Oh gosh. Very funny. How to become a certified ZBrush trainer? I I don't think it's that's a thing. I don't think they have certified ZBrush trainers. I've been training, I've been teaching ZBrush for I don't know, six years now, and I'm not, I'm not certified. <laughs> okay, think this down. Bring this. Put your palm behind the figure. I was hoping my shirt would block it enough. Um, how much time do they usually give you? It depends on the character. Between four and eight weeks, something like that. Pretty awesome. Thanks for sharing. Is it okay not to not worry about the height of the figure and just adjust it at the end? Uh, we had we had to focus on it the whole time. Zebrush Oracle chooses you as these fear appears out of nowhere and teleports you. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Whoops. I want to just shrink this down a little bit. If you see a zebra certification course run <laughs> oh i know which one you're talking about dude <laughs> yeah so can i just say george that was not that was not official not official like not certified by pixel logic basically what i'm saying Let's get some eyelids going on here. And I'm going to use that transparency technique that I love so much. Thanks, Lord. If you're streaming for ZBrush, is the live cam something you choose or is it a requirement to make sure you're human? Um, I, I don't know. I, they, they didn't, they didn't ask me to do a live cam. but I think they prefer you to have one just so people can see that you're human. 
So the reason I like to do this technique, because you can turn on the transparency so you can see right through the head. And that way, uh, your your lines, your curves will snap to the eyeball and not to the surface of the head. So then I can have the eyelid tuck into the, the face like this. There we go. Hey, George, are you going to the Zebra Summit this year? I'm still debating. It's a, it's a funding thing this year. <laughs> Not that I didn't know at the time. Yeah, like most people. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, split. Let me split on mass points. Arrow down, turn off transparency, and here is, are the eyelids for this guy. For the upper eyelids, anyway. Turn on dynamic subdivisions. And I should have went one more down into the head right here, but that's okay. Hello, snare. Hey Tenchi, I didn't even see you hop in here. How's it going, man? Um, I don't think so. It's their first year back in person, right? Yep. Probably try and jump in the sculpt off. That's a good idea. Okay. I think I want to try and get this to go around. Let's see. I'm going to solo the eyeballs and the eyelids for a second. Again, I probably should have drawn it this way instead of dragging the points down. So did you get all certified then? <laughs> Sorry. Luck, Lori. Thank you. Doing well, thanks. Just got back from Virgin Norway. Wow. Fjords and hikes everywhere. Nice. That sounds amazing. I've always wanted to check Norway out. Doing well. Okay. Just trying to get this eyelid to curve down to down to the like the tear duct. So it's kind of curving down tight all the way down to here rather than going and like disappearing into the nose. So I'm just gonna work on that a little bit more. Um not liking how the construction is looking. Now what I can do too is I can grab the Z modeler brush and insert an edge if I want more geometry. It's like why isn't that handling the way I wanted to? The Z modeler brush also has a move bit built in if you grab the vertex. So I forgot to switch over to my move brush, but it was still working, but it was just fast. And I'm like, why is it so fast? Almost there. Get a big brush. Okay. Let's turn on transparent so we can actually grab so it's it's long enough, it's just not forward enough. That's feeling better. All right. Expose a little bit more here. 
now we can do the lower eyelids. <laughs> My ruler's ruler showing. There we go. And he's got these really prominent lower eyelids. So I want to make sure I get those in there. But first, I kind of want to pull this cheek back and kind of straighten it up. So it doesn't come forward so much. Joy Boy, love the name. Welcome to the stream. Okay, so with this one, well, I'm going to select the eyeballs again, hit transparent, and then we'll do the same thing. But I'm going to do, I'm going to draw the top line on the eyeball itself. And then the second line, I do want to snap to the, to the actual face. So I'm going to turn off transparency for that step. So now it'll snap to the surface of his head, like his face right here, rather than the eyeball. Um, that ruler came in real handy a couple weeks ago. Awesome. How to fix somebody's 3D print file for them. Yeah, it's, even though we have Scale Master, I still, I, I don't know why, I just don't trust it. So I, I trust the ruler, and I actually use the ruler to go back and forth between um, Reillusion and ZBrush. Let's see, you know what? I think I'll just do it like this for now. Give it some depth. Hmm. I think I'm just going to go single-sided. Boom. Come on. Sometimes it doesn't want to take. I have to <laughs> see all these little dots. Come on, you can do it, little, there it goes, okay. Sometimes when you set it to draw size one, it doesn't want to, uh, it doesn't think you're gonna, you know, finish it off, so you kind of have to do a couple tries. Okay, so split on mass points, arrow down. And now we have this lower eyelid. You can actually turn on dynamic subdivisions. Ruler always works to keep scale and consistency. Yep, and I give this ruler away for free if you're new to the channel here or new to the live stream. Um, it comes with my free brushes, my user interface. You can get it over at uh, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. And I, I use it for all of my 3D printing. Basically, it's this guy right here. And it's a 20 centimeter tall ruler or you can use it as two meters tall and pretend this is 200 centimeters tall. And that is how I, uh, that's how I go back and forth between Real Illusions Character Creator and back to ZBrush again. I use this ruler and I set the world, uh, the, the world measurement to 200 centimeters tall. And then I can go back and forth with ease. I also do that with Maya. And essentially all it's doing is it's changing this export number right here. The default is one, but it changes it to 100. And that way this, the height becomes uh, 100 times the height of the regular uh, typical ZBrush unit, I guess. So it helps out a lot. You can go back and forth between any, any software that has a scale like that of, of a meter essentially. Okay. Yeah, scaling scaling can be tricky. It can be hard to get the right scale. Okay. So it's much easier if you have a known, something known that you can, uh, in your scene that you can rely on. Can bring this up a little bit higher. My ears go. No, no, no. There we go. Okay, I was working on these lower eyelids. Here we go. Um, and pull these into the head, and then 
kind of make them taper like this. Keep working with OBJ from ZBrush and that's worked great to bring back and forth so far. Yeah, as long as you set it to the right scale, I typically don't use GoZ because GoZ tends to add extra materials and things that I don't necessarily want. Um, so that works out great. And the the real real illusion plugin uh, is is GoZ, and that one works out really great actually. But the one for Maya, um, it's not as predictable. I'm just gonna add an edge loop in here, so then I can kind of puff puff this out like so. Give it give it a bit of curvature. Then I can give it some thickness right here. I'm going to turn or I'm going to hide the creases. I'm just going to uncrease all and then turn on post process. So it's rounded edges instead of creased edges. Looks more like softer lower eyelids. Now we can adjust to tuck, tuck this back in to where the tear duct is. There we go. Make sure it just hugs that eyeball. Should probably do that with the upper eyelid as well. I want to make a portfolio as a 3D game artist. What should I make? Um, like, you should make. I'm not not to be a jerk, but you should make uh, game characters in the style of the games that you want to work on. So basically, a portfolio life. Somebody asked me about how to get into the toy industry, and it's the same answer, but for games. So you basically decide on what type of games you want to work on and then show those types of characters in your portfolio. Oh, working on my mentor mentorship term in Think Tank. You're an inspiration. Thanks, Snare. Um, Think Tank is fantastic. It's a great, it's a great place especially for, for realistic game characters. My friend Pedro went, went there and he, is, he had really great results. Okay, now I'm gonna shape these eyes a little bit, or these eyelids a little differently here. Let me see what happens if I uncrease. Yeah, that's pretty good. Drag them down. I actually want to let's see bring bring this straighter start to get that that I'm going to try and get this as straight as I possibly can but I don't know how good I can do it here pull this out this in this out yeah that's tricky A little polish There's a Pixar movie, uh, Incredibles 2, has some really, really great base planes on the characters, and they're different. So, like the the main antagonist um, has different facial planes than Mr. Incredible, and it's really fun to see the contrast between the two. Hey, Jerome, are you still here, by the way? Just wondering if you if you helped work on those at all. Let me see something here, if I can find it to show you.
Hmm. Do you watch anime? I do. Certain anime. <laughs> I don't. Not a, not a ton, but. Hmm. I think I'd have to play the film and freeze frame certain certain bits, but it's it's this guy right here has this very awesome plane change going across here and down around his eye and down the front of his cheek. He, he's got an expression right here, so you can't really see it. And then and then Mr. Incredible's got a different a different set of planes that go in a different direction, like around. I don't think I've seen Bleach. Like I've watched a little bit of uh, One Piece and One One Punch Man, and my favorite is My Hero Academia. I've watched a little bit of One Piece, not not a ton of it. Maybe like the first three seasons or something. It's a slog, long. <laughs> So I'm going to try merging these together. Let me see. Bring this back. <laughs> I have not seen all 1,000 <laughs> episodes of One Piece. I've seen enough to to know what it's about. <laughs> I'm gonna be king of the pirates. He just shouts that all the time. See, bring nostril in a little bit. Oops, meant to do this. There we go. I don't know which case closed, but it's like a thousand episodes. Holy crap. Okay, I didn't mean to do that. Let's see, I need to isolate this, which will look funny for a second. Push this up in there. Are you using a tablet? I am not, I'm using a Cintiq. I wonder if uh, Maxon would let me put what I'm using down in the description because I seem to get that question a lot. I don't mind people asking it, but it's common. Okay, let's see. Up. <laughs> How do you move groups with the gizmo hamburger icon? Uh, you just turn it on and then um, like this. And then what I typically do, you just use the control shift controls. So I usually clear everything out first and then I just control shift click on the things that I want to move together like these things. And then, um, and then I use my giz, where did my gizmo go? I don't know where my gizmo went. Well, when it's there, <laughs> and this is the first time I've seen that. When it's there, uh, I, I, I typically, yeah, I don't know what happened to it. 
Anyway, I don't know. Where did my gizmo go? <laughs> yep, hamburger. It does. It looks like hamburger icon. But I just lost my... I totally lost my gizmo. Where did you go, gizmo? Better save it. As soon as if ZBrush ever starts to starts acting strangely, it's a good idea to save it. Okay, I'm just gonna merge. Well, I don't. Oh, there it's. It's at least I have these things. I don't know where the move went. Where did my move go? That's really strange. I only have <laughs> scale and this. That's crazy. Okay. You get the idea now. <laughs> okay. Um, well, let's see. I'm going to merge this with this. Where's my gizmo on this one? I don't know <laughs> where it went with the other one. That's really strange. Okay, so I'm going to split mask. There we go. And then upper lip to this. Yeah, I'm going to merge these two together. I did not know you had to clear the selection so it was worth. Um, that's typically what I do because I can't see what's hidden and what's not. So I'll usually just clear it out completely and then I'll just select the things I want. It's much more predictable that way. Merge down, merge, merge, merge down. Okay, boom. All right, and then hopefully our gizmo is there. There it is. And then go to gear and remesh by union. Boom. Click on the gear, say accept. And now these are merged together and I can Go to Scope Just Pro, turn that on. And I need to go to the Stroke Scope Just Pro and turn off, turn off Adaptive Size. Turn Symmetry back on. And now I can smooth this out. But it's the, the triangles are too, too big. So what I can do is click on this uh, subdivide size, grab it, pull it over here, and pick from the surface. And now it should be the same size. There we go. They added that because of me. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Maxon slash Pixelogic. Okay. There we go. It's looking a little better. Of the picker yeah it was great uh do you like hard surface um i only really do hard surface when i need to make a prop or something like that i'm not i'm not like i don't make mechs and cars and things like that very much could you explain the difference between the different merging options explain it to me like you want to do a turnip like merging options basically there's I only use one and that's merge down. <laughs> uh come on, Nightbot, you can be nicer than that. Jeez. That's funny. <laughs> okay, so so rude. Um so basically merge let's see, let's look at the merge options. I don't even know what they are. Okay, so merge down will take one subtool and merge it down to the other. Merge similar, I don't even know what that does because I don't use it very much. Let's hit control. Uh, we'll merge all subtools which have similar polygon counts. Very useful when you want to combine subtools where originally duplicated. Okay, so if you have duplicate, a whole bunch of uh, similar things and you want to combine them all. Um, merge visible is a, I, I do use this one all the time. And basically what that does is it will take 
all of your visible subtools and make a brand new tool out of it where everything is all merged together. So one tip I can tell you about merging objects together is if you have subdivision levels, make sure that both subtools that you're trying to merge together have the same subtool or subdivision count. So if one has three, make sure the other one has three. And if they both have three, then when you merge them together, they will still have three between the two of them. Okay. Look, Lori, it's okay if you spam laughter. <laughs> I'm okay with that. All right. What about the ones in the gear icon menu option? Are you talking about, oh, you're talking about the remeshers? Um, remesh by Dynamesh will basically merge everything together and then Dynamesh it. Remesh by Union will just merge everything together and stitch it together only. And then Remesh by Z Remesher will merge everything together and then Z Remesh it after that. I don't know if it's the same for you, Shane, but something I learned recently is I get less crashes when I don't do the always okay option on merge down delete. Oh, I haven't really had crashes from that. That's, that's good to know though. Huh. Um, after you merge, do you go around with Sculptress Pro on the whole other subtools to make it even or just the edges where they meet? Typically just the edges where they meet, I'll smooth it out. Um, sometimes I'll, Sometimes I'll go through and, and smooth it together, but not, not most often. Like this one. So say I, if I want to merge the, the lower lip into the head, um, I can do that too really, really fast just to show you again. If you're doing a 3D print on your model, make sure you check for each subtool's water type before you, first before you merge. And, and uh, another way you can uh, make sure that it's watertight is... Um, you know, you can either Dynamesh it or you can remesh by union. Both of those will make, make it watertight. That's nice. For a while, I was getting tons of crashes on Merge Down. That's crazy. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't really... I don't really use always, though, because I'm, <laughs> too, I'm too skeptical of it not working or, like, accidentally hitting Merge Down when I don't mean to, you know? Okay, I'm just going to pull this down a little bit, check that nose, and then I'm going to actually merge the nose and the lower lip into this head. So let's see. There's a lower lip right there. And then the nose, I don't want the ears, just the nose. So I can isolate this, split hidden. Now I just have the nose right there. I hope you didn't curse me, George. If it doesn't crash, I better save it before I do this. <laughs> I feel like 2023 has specific crashes, usually um, having to do with local symmetry. Since they added that, it's got some, some crashes associated. What if the tools have the same level but different density it doesn't matter as long as they have the same subdivision level okay um like if one has four and one has three you'll lose one of the subdivision levels or you'll just lose them all uh let's see okay grab this one and then say merge down okay so that's and then this one merge down Okay, and now we have these. So I can solo this so you can see it just by itself. And now I'm going to do a remesh by union. Rinse, repeat. Remesh by union. Click on the gear, say accept. Take a look, closer look at it. And it will stitch my mouth closed, and that's okay. Uh, 
if nothing else, ZBrush has gotten real good at recognizing it's crashing and saving before it goes. Yeah, that's true. Do you usually finalize your models with PolyPaint or do you use another software for that? Usually I'll do PolyPaint. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of PolyPaint. I love color because I feel like color has weight and it can change the look of your entire model. So I, I like to get color on there as soon as possible, even from the very beginning. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll bake that color. If I'm going to use something like a substance painter to do the textures, I will, I'll bake, I'll bake the poly paint into the base color texture. Okay. You know what? Now that I have all this merged down and together, I can see that this bottom lip is sticking out way too far. Um, what's the current ZBrush 2023 build? Um, I have 2023.2. I don't know if, I think that's the latest. Where do you do your final renders after Substance Painter? Um, it depends on what I'm trying to do. Um, if I'm doing a game character, I'll typically render it out in like Marmoset tool bag or even Substance itself. Um, but if I'm doing it for like a, a, a nicer presentation, I'll either use Keyshot or Red, what is it called? Redshift um, or Blender, like Cycles or something like that. It just depends. I really like that, that uh, there's that render in here now. Well, part part of it, sort of. <laughs> I had a perpetual license, so I'm stuck in the last version of that. Now I just cry whenever I see the new features. <laughs> yeah, I think I think a lot of people are there. I'm bringing this neck down. It's a little too far far back. I like to put my necks on an angle, but that's getting a little crazy. I might be able to continue this next week. So it looks funny without a mustache, without eyebrows and stuff. Maybe next week I'll go into building his, uh, his coat and his shirt, and his little bow tie and his hair and particularly so you guys can see how I do that. But uh, anyway, that is it for today. I am out of time. So um, thank you everybody for hanging out with me today i really really appreciate it i know you guys have probably have better things to do with your time than sit and watch me noodle around in zbrush so i really really appreciate it thanks for hanging out and um yeah like i said i think next week i'll keep going on this guy um i'm seeing a whole bunch of things i want to change sometimes it's good to walk away from your sculpt and come back and give it fresh eyes and and reevaluate it see what's what's not working and uh, make your adjustments. So as usual, I give away my user interface and brushes for free over on my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. You can just scroll down a little bit and you can find the brushes for free. And I also teach an online course, a full inclusive all the way from nothing to finished game character with all the texturing and everything. Um, so you can join us over there and I also teach one-on-one -on -one coaching if you're interested in that. And I just barely started a brand new Patreon if you're interested in that. So um, yeah, thanks so much, everybody. And happy sculpting. We'll see you next Monday. All right, take care. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, George. Good to see you. Cheers. <laughs>